Really? Bit of an unusual one this time, because we've got the Erosa on the dyno. Generally, when we're going to be uh, doing out on this on the dyno, it's either lastminute.com, and we've got time to even think about recording it, or it blows up <laughs> and uh, we cause ourselves some problems. So, we'd, we've not run the Erosa for six months or something like that, not far off. We had it out towards end of last year, twice, and it rained both times, so literally the car were prepped, ready to run. We weren't 100% happy with it for a few reasons, but it weren't ready. We needed to run it, got there, rained, come home. So there's an event planned for this weekend that we decided we weren't going to go to because we'd just not really got time to get it prepped. But in between, in between a couple of jobs, because we knew it didn't need much workshop work, we thought we'd get it in and uh, have a play. So, put it on the dyno, got it run up, got it warmed up, running pretty good. These are the figures that we got. So we got 441 horsepower and 450-ish foot-pound, looking at that there. And that's pretty much as good as we can expect from diesel only. That's no nitrous, no methanol, nothing weird going on. You can see it's very laggy, especially on the dyno, because it's only a fairly short pull in uh, shoot 4F. On the track, we're getting full boost, close to 4,000, but we're revving it to 57 anyway, so it's a decent enough power band for drag racing. So the 453 horsepower that you can see there, it's only slightly better. We'll go over to the car and have a look in a minute why we've got that, but that's with a tiny little bit of nitrous, just a, a tiny little jet, that's just there. We use it just to bring it up onto launch control a bit quicker. So we spent a bit too much time at the line trying to get it going, so we decided to put that on there. So as you go full throttle, you get a little bit of nitrous, and that helps, uh, gives a little bit at the top end as well, but we, we'd never run it like that anyway, there's no real point. We might experiment a little bit, putting a bigger jet in there, depending on how quick it comes up to launch control, but that's for, we can play with that out in the yard. So we'll just have a quick look at what we've changed from these graphs to the next ones, and then you'll have an idea what we've and why it's better than last year. So we've changed the lift pump from what we had last year, changed the size of the fuel pipes going to it. So this is like a dash 10 hours now. It's massive, really. So that's coming from the pump to the filter, from the filter into the high pressure pump. So that's one change. Still got the same two micron filter kit that we've got. That's there. Still on the John Deere turbo, which we'll do a better video going in depth for everything and why we chose everything and what have you. This is just purely to see what we've done different. So the nitrous system we've got here now, this is a Revo from Wizard of Nos. So this is what we've run for the last couple of years and had tons of success with it. It's been perfect really. But this one now, it, we used to run a 350. This is now a 500. We've gone to the bigger 5 mil line. We've got it as close as we can get it to the boost pipe. So you can see these two fittings come from that into the boost pipe. And then this third fitting on the top here, that comes from, you can't really see it now because of the next thing we'll talk about, but there's another little pull side there. So that's the one just with a small little 25 jet in that's just helping the turbo come onto song. So we can, we can change the base power figure as such, and then we can, with this Revo, change it by changing a jet, which is obviously a mechanical job. This Revo, because it's a 500, we've gone way bigger than we needed to, just so when we get to the track, we can always add a little bit more on. So, the other thing that we're testing here now, we'll go over and look at the figures in a second, but the other thing that we're testing, this is why this big silly thing's on here now, this extractor pipe, this one's unfiltered and uh, not the one we normally use. What we normally do, I have to just scoot under here, we've got this, there you are right there Danny, can you get through? We normally use this elaborate exhaust setup with this big 
silly flexi. That's the that's a normal downpipe. The one that's on there is just one that fits better on the dyno. But we've normally got this three-inch downpipe up pipe coming straight out of the bonnet. So when we're in race mode at the track, this is what we've got. To obviously not fill the dyno full of smoke, we put this exhaust system on, which is three inch here, but then it reduces down to two and a half inch here. So the problem we we think we're seeing on the dyno, we're not actually getting representative figures because we're running this to the back to the filled extractors. So we, we're happy with the power this is running now. So as one last quick test, we wanted to take all this off and just literally send the exhaust straight up out the back of the building, truly some filtered exhaust. So this has got a fan on it pulling away. So hopefully a, uh, a 12 inch exhaust is not gonna restrict us. So if we go back over to the computer, which is not ideal, it's like an obstacle course. So we've got 450 with that little little nitrous jet in there. So I'll just hide this one because it makes it hard to see when you're seeing everything. So 450, that's the baseline figure. So we normally arrive 450s, 420s, depending on the day, the temperature, everything. Last year. So we've changed the nitrous since last year as well. But then... This was the baseline, we're happy with that. The nitrous, we weren't getting any leaner than we were last year. So this is right. We know that at that, at that power, should I, sorry, right, I'm, uh, I need to open this graph up. Running the same amount of nitrous as usual on the same injectors and everything that we run last year. This is what we get. So I'll just move that out of the way if I can. 556 and nearly 600 foot pound of torque. So you can see the nitrous helps the turbo spool a bit quicker as well. And this is 40% of what that nitrous kit will deliver, which is probably nearer to probably 60% of what it had delivered before, which on the old dyno we struggled to get traction, but this dyno, the rollers seem to be a little bit more grippy. So we seem to be getting the grip there. If we turned it up to like 80% before or 90%, percent it just absolutely destroyed tyres. So we, we definitely helped by this, the fact that this car seems a bit happier strapped down as it is and on this dyno. So we've got 556. If we added any more nitrous to that, all that happened was it got leaner and leaner and leaner and we're at sort of diminishing returns. So we said, well, the only other option we've got is put some bigger injectors in. These are already massive custom injectors. They're pretty near to what the stage two, these are pretty near to what the stage two are that we're, uh, we're just doing some testing on now that they're gonna go in the city go and everything as well. They've increased in size a little bit, so that's as much as you're gonna get out of them anyway. We stretch them a little bit further than you want to stretch them. The 500's about where that the stage twos um, are gonna be safe. So we commissioned a set of big, even bigger injectors with tons of internal modifications, all sorts of stuff done to them, which we're very happy we are. They've turned out on the bench at least. Like, crazy the difference. So we'd, we'd had them on shelf a few weeks. This is right. We're at the stage now where the nitrous is working, the engine's working. Let's get them swapped in. So we're running the same amount of nitrous, putting these new injectors in, running less duration, the same rail pressure for the same EGTs it works out at. So we're getting more, we're going to be getting more fuel, the same EGT, so it's burning as efficiently, so we're not going to be causing us any problems. We got this, so where are we? So we've finally broken a 600 horsepower mark, so 608 horsepower and like 660 foot pound of torque, which is just ridiculous. But this is still at 40% nitrous, and we've still got tons of fuel left in them injectors. We're running like nowhere near our sort of safe limits. EGTs are up there, but when we add some nitrous, they'll cool down a little bit at the track. 
and obviously when we uh, add some more fuel and they'll come back. So we, we're not way past the limits. We, we're nowhere near the highest we've ever seen on this car. And we know the engine will take it, at least for the quarter mile anyway. You, you just melt If you have this on track, you just melt it. But so we've done 608 horsepower. Really happy with that. Like I say, it's the best it's ever done. We've got a nice flat power curve. So obviously on the dyno, like I say, it's a little bit more on the on the track. But we've got from 46 to 56 on here because it cuts you a bit short because you are wheel spinning just a little bit. You're just right on the edge where the brake can hold it. So it, it appears to rev less. But from 46 to 56, just flat power. We've got 600 horsepower all the way across. So this will be ridiculously faster on track. I'm sure of it. Obviously, the problem where we were having were always launch and getting into third gear, so we'll work on that. But power wise, we've got tons. So, the next test that we want to do now, which we'll try and record, hopefully, it's not a big flop and there's smoke and uh, bits of car everywhere, is with the exhaust off. So, at the minute, that 608 horsepower is feeding through a two and a half inch exhaust. So, we'll put the uh, we'll get it warmed up, we'll run it. See what it does. Try and record the run and uh, see how we get on. Right then, <clears throat> it made a difference. So you can see here, we've got probably 200 RPM more spool. Um, I'll just change the scaling on here just so that it, you can actually see a bit better because it does some weird stuff sometimes. But yeah, we, we're closer to 700 foot pound of torque now. And, uh, the power's increased by 30, which there's some little, these little deviations here, they're just from the, the wheels trying to lift off rollers, so we're not too worried about them, but obviously that would affect the peak power a little bit. But we've gained a good 10 or 15 horsepower at the low end, it, throughout if we put sort of a line of best fit in there. So, successful test. I think it's not worth Taking that exhaust off every time we're running this car, I think that's just a dyno numbers uh, exercise, really, because we don't want smoke everywhere when we're not running it nitrous. It blew that pipe clean off, and you'll see on video, it weren't that smoky, so we've definitely got plenty left in it. Um, I can't remember what air to fuel ratio we're at, but we'll, we'll dig through all the data, we'll have a play, and... Uh, see where we can improve but we got to the point which we'll try and do a video on it in the future when we've got time to compile all this data but we were at the point at 40 percent with the old injectors where adding more nitrous just made it leaner now we're at the point where i don't think we're too far away from that uh, air to fuel ratio again now so we need to add more fuel in again so at the same nitrous will gain us some power. So if we wanted to spend all day and try and blow it up on dyno, we could. We've got other stuff we want to do, so we're going to get it ripped off now. 
get on with doing some more interesting stuff. So we've got a few jobs backed up that just need tuning. Workshops at full capacity as usual. Um, so yeah, I think we will be putting this on Dino again. Maybe there'll be some more big numbers to come from it. World record figures if you want to start being, making bold claims. But we uh, try and let the, the drag numbers do the talking. And what a lot of people don't realise as well, the numbers at the drag strip that's the most important as far as an engine's power is concerned is the, uh, the speed that you cross the line. So we've, we've been beaten by a few people over, over the years and then we've subsequently beaten them and we're not quite there with a one last car. But we're, we're always faster, we're always faster the, um, over the line. The time sometimes a little bit more because we're getting a bad set off or not changing gear as quick or not giving it as much at low end. So we're always interested in the speed we're doing. With this power, we'll do 150 mile an hour next time we're out, I'm certain. We are 148 pretty consistently last year and we've just got tons more now, just looking at this. So we'll, um, we'll see what we can do improvement wise want to rip it off and have time compiling data rather than just keep plugging away, plugging away until something goes pop and then you can't quite figure out why. So, really happy. Hopefully the video is of some interest. We're going to do a really in-depth video of the Arosa at some point. It's probably not going to be before this uh, video goes out there. But if anybody's watching this and wants to sort of, a summary of what the most important part is, what we've learned today is obviously if you're not running a common rail engine you can't really do what we've done as, as easily but bigger injectors, shorter duration and the Revo Nitrous kit for a drag application without a shadow of a doubt. You can get away with the pulsoids no problem but as far as smooth and progressive power is concerned that you can change at the track side as you need it without playing about too much it's the Revo Nitrous system that you need. It's expensive, but so is blowing an engine up every few runs like some of the some of the people that we're competing against sometimes do. Um, obviously, we can't be too sure. Um, but we know from our experience, even using the pulsoids, which are the best solenoid-based nitrous system, we still had problems with the engines, not caused directly by the pulsoid, but the sort of issue you get pulsing the nitrous is what will kill in the kill the engines. Whereas the Revo system, there's no pulsing going on. It just works a treat. So it, it was worth all the effort that we're going to. Thank you to Trevor for helping us out with that one. And uh, yeah, really happy. There's tons more in this. So we next time we go to the track, we're not going to be doing what we did last time, and that was fighting with running nitrous nearly as full as it would go but the bottles were getting empty or the uh, we weren't quite getting as much as we expected from the last bit. So we, that's that's a part of one of the tests that we'll, we'll show and we'll go a bit more in depth that you need to make sure that every increase in nitrous is actually an increase in, in nitrous flow because it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting more. You might be at the point where you're at the limit of the pipes coming from the pull side or the, the revo to the engine or from the bottle to the uh, the pull side or the revo. So that's going to be <laughs> looking at, for, if, if we extrapolate, we're going to be over seven 800 horsepower before we'd find what 100% is on the dyno. So we'll, we're going to have to do it at the track, really. But last year, we're plagued with problems as far as getting as much fuel as we wanted in the engine. So now, these injectors, this tons of headroom, absolutely tons of headroom. I'd be surprised if these injectors wouldn't flow over seven, well over 700 horsepower. So if we get to the track and with, we're turning them up a little bit, we're going to be well over 700 at the track. Getting it to roll down on the dyno is a different thing. So if anybody wants to, wants us to do any testing to uh, back up these claims of power, we've done a dyno before on the Arosa. We know nitrous and uh, the the dyno operator didn't want to run it again when uh, it were at. A, a show a few weeks later so that just proves it's uh, it's doing what it needs to do but we'll 
the next test for this car to be put on an UB dyno where you've got no wheel spin issues and just see what it does. And I know, even at this power, if we put on a, a Dynapack UB dyno like, um, like we're using the MSV Championship, knowing what difference this dyno has to that one, just driving off here with 220 horsepower and you go to there and you do 240 at least. So we know if we put this on there as it is now, we're going to be near a 700 horsepower. And then, like I said, we've got tons of headroom in injectors and nitrous system. If we wanted just to do a dyno queen number, I know some of the American people here just go mental and uh, just build cars just to do dyno numbers. So if we really wanted to do that, there's probably less chance of it raining us off and uh, less cues to have a go. So you never know. But really happy. I'm going to get this ready for uh, the drag strip when we've uh, cleared some of the backlog in the workshop. And uh, maybe we'll hit some half mile events or something like that and see what we can do. It's, uh, what do it last half mile? Like 165 on it, something like that. Might have done a bit more than that. But with this power, it's going to be a lot faster. So, thank you very much. Cheers for watching. If you want to see more at a Rosa, let us know in comments. Subscribe as well. We'll try and do as much as we can. We try not to give away all the secrets, but to be honest, we're not doing anything too radical. Obviously, we're not going to tell you where we get everything from. If you want some of the stuff we've got, buy it from us and you'll have all the painstaking R&D that we've done to try and get to here, rather than trying to shortcut your way to the longer path. So, yeah, thank you.